My name is Aiden, and this is my river. This is the Cowichan River in Vancouver Island, and it is especially dear to me because I go there every year. Every summer, I get to enjoy how amazing it is to live in beautiful British Columbia, to fish, swim, and tube in the river. However, for the past few years, the water keeps getting lower and lower, and the weather keeps getting hotter and hotter. A little while ago, my grandpa began to volunteer with the Cowichan Lake and River Stewardship Society. After he told me about the work they did, I joined it too. Stewardship means responsibly taking care of resources, not wasting water and preserving those natural resources for my grandchildren to enjoy, just as I have enjoyed them with my grandpa. All the wildlife and people in the area enjoy this wonderful, life-giving river. This year, the water was so low in places, I could walk across it. Every year, it gets lower and lower. I cooled off on Canada Day's unbearable heat by swimming in the river. Well, I'll swear in Lake Cowichan and around our province, wildfires raged. The Stewardship Society has been trying very hard to bring awareness to this, to help manage the river locally. It is important to manage the conservation of water, especially during this time of heat and drought. This week we volunteered to go out and rescue salmon fry that have gotten trapped in the streams and creeks. As they dry into pools, the water evaporates and the fry would die if we didn't save them. This time I joined Bob and the other volunteers that have been doing this for a while and spent the day walking the dry riverbeds to find stranded fry in evaporating pools. Can you imagine all those puddles of water drying up as thousands of fish die? You can see what it is that we're doing here. This was actually a nice deep puddle in Ashburnham Creek. Unfortunately, most puddles were not this deep. Most of them only had a little bit of water in them. You can see the fish in here are very stressed out. We went in with special nets to gently fish them out and carefully transport them in buckets. Then we sorted out the coho from the Chinook. The Chinook are special in these parts. We had to separate them, clip their tails, and sent them for DNA testing. The fry in the buckets got a second chance. You can see how we sort them into the buckets with the net. The buckets are full of water and fry are very heavy, so I needed some help. There are only a few of us and we're out there several hours. We managed to save about 2,000 salmon fry. Imagine if more people help, how many fish we could save? You can see that clipping the fins is delicate work. It helps us with DNA identification, but it has to be done gently and fast so as not to stress out the fish. This is how we can keep track of them. Afterwards, we drove them out to the river and very gently released them. It has to be done carefully to avoid thermal shock. The water in the bucket is a different temperature than that of the river, so if you let them out too quickly, the fish can go into shock and die. You can see them. Look at all the little guys having a second chance at life. They'll swim out into the wonderful deep river, and maybe in a year or two I may get to fish one or two of them with my grandpa. You should care about keeping these wonderful rivers and lakes around for your generation, your kids' generation, and your grandkids' generation. I want to be able to enjoy them for many years to come. This is my river. But it's not just my river, it's your river too. Please make your voice heard. Please help us in the conservation of wildlife and waterways.